have some food, drink, giveaways, and enter for a chance to win VIP seats to the TV shows on Sunday and a free year-long subscription to the core. All right, Bowie fans, pick out your favorite athlete, cheer her on. Ladies, arrows are up. You have a full set of pins. Now how about a great send-off for the final round of competition at the Go Bowling PWA Players Championship. Good luck, ladies. Good morning, good afternoon to wherever you may be watching from, whether it's the morning in your area, the afternoon, potentially the evening. It could even be the next day or the previous day. We certainly say welcome. Here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, it is 11.05 Central Time. And the final round of qualifying is underway at the 2017 GoBowling.com PWBA Players Championship, along with Matthew Canizaro, on his government names this morning. My name is Emil Anthony Williams, Jr. We welcome you to 
the Ashwabanon Bowling Alley. One of the best centers in the land. Some great people running the show. As we get prepared to cut to the top 18 bowlers. We'll then move on to match play. That will start tonight at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern time for round number one of match play. That's six more games before we get to that point. A lot can happen in those six games as well. So obviously as we get closer to the sixth and final game, we should keep an eye on where players are, who's battling to get to that top 18. Also on the line this week, 32 opportunities to cash. So if you do not make match play, if you remain in the top 32, 19 through 32, you will receive a prize check for your 18 games of effort. Of course, as always, be sure to check out pwba.com slash live. Everything you need in regards to results, standings, and live scoring, which will certainly help as we get closer to our match play cut this evening, for example. We take a look at the scores. You line it up, of course, with the respective players you're rooting for, want to know about, and follow along in that regard. Lindsey Boomershine, our leader after 12 games last night. She is on our featured pair as we kick off round three. She is joined with Liz, Liz Colkin and Natalie Cortez on 35 and 36. Then on 37 and 38, Missy Klug, Aaron McCarthy, and uh, USBC Hall of Famer Leanne Holsenberg. If you haven't, be sure to check out pwba.com. See the last night's uh, re recap in regards to our leader, Kelly Kulik, just three pins behind Lindsey Boomershine after 12 games. They both shot 240, 240 plus. Boomershine shot 244. Got the last three shots of that posted on Facebook, Twitter. Kelly shot 249. It wasn't enough, of course, to overtake Boomer Shine. Did what she had to do to remain in the lead. Lindsay, of course, a new mom. Along with having a knee injury, so she has been very smart listening to her body. She's taking some time off in between events. In fact, the last event she bowled was the Queens, so she coming out to another major event and performing just as she did at the Queens, where she was the top qualifier. And now on her way to being the top qualifier potentially here at the Players' Championship. Cortez, no stranger to this building, as well as Aaron McCarthy. Both had very, very good and memorable runs here at the uh, Schwabenon Bowling Alley in 2015. McCarthy was the number one seed for television that year. 
ultimately losing to Liz Johnson. The TV finals, Natalie Cortez, a great run, ended up finishing eighth. Very special place for many, of course, including the event's defending champion, Clara Guerrero. Won her first PWBA title last year. This event, of course, was a major as well. A two for one there for Clara. The, the two, maybe it was the four. Saw it late, but uh, to make a good break for Leanne Holsenberg to begin. Game one, nine spare, nine spare, a strike and a split, and then a nice break there. Clue. And her first open frame. Front four and then the nine spare, of course. Ten pin taken care of for Boomer Shine. So picking up really right, right where she left off. But of course, made her first TV finals appearance last season. St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. Finishing second to Rocio Restrepo. Liz Colkin, good shot. First strike of the game for Liz Culkin. Leanne able to sometimes get bowling balls back from places other people cannot. She's been doing that for a very long time. Also in the top five after 12 games, Amanda Green, plus 157 in third. C.T. Rockman from Malaysia. In fact, Malaysia has the next four places. C.T. Rockman fourth, Shaidal Hamidi fifth, Shalin Zulkifli in seventh, and let's see who else. In ninth, Lee Jane Sin. And their final bowler, who is here competing right now just outside the number for match play, is Natasha Roslin at 20th. Shannon Pluhowski shot 263 in game 12 last night to get you plus 91. If you recall in round one when we saw Shannon, 
set. We're interested to see some of the round two results from Shannon and what she will ultimately do to score better. Of course, she went uh, 23 under in round number one and then went down 114 over in round two. To players like that generally figure it out. Of course, Shannon used to making uh, quick adjustments in regards to being sometimes the only left-hander in certain rounds, catchers round, match play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No games under 200. Low game 202, high game 263. A very good block for and Shannon. And as we scan the stats, I believe the highest block of round two. Close behind and second would have be would be Lindsey Boomershine, 1308. Brittany Smith went 100 over as well. She shot 1302. After struggling a little bit in round number one also, she is in the number at plus 47. So some good round two adjustments. yesterday and talking to some of the players during the second block uh, obviously it's the same pattern but uh, the more you run it the uh, you know it can change a little bit and uh, just based on uh, just walking around and looking it seemed a little bit tougher in the afternoon squad um, we saw some big scores you know throughout of course people are going to figure it out but uh, for the most part uh, players finding them relatively challenging after lunch yesterday you know, everybody making the adjustments they could based on what they saw first round. So, of course, you know, different equipment choices, different surfaces. Things are going to break down a little bit differently, transition uh, differently. Uh, but it seemed to be a little bit more of a grind in the afternoon yesterday. Long day, 12 games, so the potential for getting a little bit tired. I know uh, Kelly Kulik said she was able to play to her strength, which is to get a little bit left, open up the lane, and uh, use a higher ball speed. Uh, some players were looking for actually 14-pound equipment for today to uh, to be able to get that ball speed up a little bit. So doing all they can to, to make the right adjustments, but uh, it's tricky out here for sure. And uh, you know, it's a grind. And and, and, and talking to some of the, the folks walking by, spare shooting all year long at a premium, very important. Uh, and perhaps yesterday. You know, a few maybe less splits than they've seen throughout this, the early part of the season, but uh, definitely spare shooting for many, not at its best. Uh, but now here on the fresh again, uh, also another another challenge. Some events, you see the fresh and the burn, uh, or the fresh and the burn, the double burn even, uh, but fresh every block here. and uh, So some for the players to figure out, they're going to see it again later today. Should they make it to match play? Uh, right now, it looks like Rocio Restrepo not having too much trouble on the fresh one pair to our right. She's got spare eight bagger. So 290 possible here uh, in the opening game. Nice little boost for her possibly happening. Uh, but this is it. This is the time for that final push. Some players uh, we talked to last evening, uh, 40 or 50, 60 pins out uh, of a cash of, a, of the cut. 67 players in the field, so uh, with 32 getting a check, nobody's really out of it uh, at this point. Six games, potential for a couple big scores. And to sneak in and get a check, uh, that's pretty significant money uh, coming in here. So taking a look at the prize fund, obviously it's a major, so 20000 on top, but low check, $1,200. That is uh, not chump change by any means. That cash number coming into today, minus 61. 
And all the way down to 53rd place even. Uh, less than 100 pins behind that number, so uh, anything really can't happen here. Six games, a lot, of, a lot of room, a lot of potential. And Emil snuck off to do a little video action of Rocio. She struck again, first shot in the 10th. Did not have a, a bad day yesterday. She's 11th overall at plus 69. So close things out yesterday with 165. So lost a few sticks there in game number 12. One shot away from jumping into the top five potentially here, depending how everybody else performs. Lindsey Boomerstein, the leader after 12 games, bowling well here in game one. Started with the front four. She still can get to 237. Aaron McCarthy, 35th coming into today. About 20 pins out of the cash number. Gonna need to do some work here. She's pulling well here to start. hanging around the cut number she's minus six coming in to today so 38 pins out there's Culkin struggling here in the opening game trying to hold on to her spot in the top 18 Break there for Boomershine, getting the 7-10 to go. For the first hit in the 10th. With, uh, scores being as close as they are. There's going to be a lot of movement here during today's six games. And we'll have those updates for you game by game as we work our way toward the cut. and try something here on the fill ball. Boomershine right. looking to get in the 230s. Holsenberg trying to make up for the miscue in the ninth. Single pin miss. The big score is one player to our right. We mentioned Rocio shooting 290. Like Brandy Branca, 268 to start things off this morning. Brandy was minus 142 in 48th place, so a huge jump there for her. Definitely puts her at least around the cash number and with some momentum to try to make a move towards the top 18. Olsenberg doubles up. Boomerstein does as well. Lindsay will finish with 237 and she's looking more and more comfortable for the top 18, but 
this particular event. Pinfall will carry over for 36 games, so every pin very important here. Tolkien finishes with 173. Kluge 162. Holsenberg will be in the 180s. 189 for the Hall of Famer. Cortez and McCarthy will finish things off for us. Again, McCarthy trying to fight her way into the cash number right now. She still can get to 227. Good shot there, gets the four to go. Finishes with 201. McCarthy unable to get the double. Should be in the two teens here. Six games here this morning, then we'll take a short break. And we'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern for the first six games of match play. Back on the fresh. Oil pattern this week is unknown. The players going out there and having to make adjustments based on ball reaction. Based on what they're seeing out there, making the moves, and a little bit old school, as some of them say. But we'll have the pattern unveiled on the TV show. It starts live Sunday at noon Eastern. One of four TV shows on Sunday. If you're in the neighborhood, come on out. Reasonably priced tickets to watch the best in the world compete here at the Ashwabadon Bowling Alley. on the move here, game two of six. About to get underway here. Great international representation this week, as always. 13 countries represented in the field. 21 international players. We're gonna see few of them here in game two. 35 and 36, Sandra Gangora of Mexico. And Daria Payuk from Poland. They're joined by Deandre Beatty. Former Team USA member, World Cup champion. And our other pair. Other pair is Bree McPherson of Australia, Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia, and Jody Wessner of Oregon, Ohio. So if you're just tuning in, you picked the, the perfect time here on day two.
at Mr. Williams. So we just got a visit from Dell Ballard Jr., the Hall of Famer. And uh, anytime he gives his endorsement, as he just did of Sandra Gangora, she is, uh, she is among the best. So I think his prediction as a potential breakout player here, not too far in the future. We'll see, I tend to trust Dell's expertise. Coming up Sunday here in Green Bay, we'll see As Beatty and Paiute making appearances on CBS Sports Network, trying to add a second telecast to that here at the PWBA Players Championship. Both coming off a great week last week in Detroit. Momentum, confidence. See how that translates here in Green Bay. As Beatty was the number, 18th position after 12 games last night. Looks like she shot 219 to start today. So trying to maintain her position in match play. I'll have to update the standings for you very soon. Start here for Paiute with the double. McPherson and Rodriguez doubling up as well. of six here on our final block of qualifying. 18 game pinfall total will determine the 18 players who advance to match play. Simple as that. If you want to check out the standings or follow the live scoring here at the Ashwaubenon on Bowling Alley, you can visit pwba.com slash live. All the necessary information will be there waiting for you. We appreciate everybody tuning in here on this Friday afternoon. This is Matt Kinizaro alongside Emil Williams Jr. And we'll be here wire to wire for the 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. This event open only to PWBA members, so limited field here of 67 of the best in the world. Any thoughts or comments or questions for us? Visit the PWBA Facebook page. We've got a link to today's live action highlight video. A look at the top 10 after the opening day of qualifying. So 
Couple comments already. Troy Fisher and Noel Suck checking in. Welcome, welcome everybody. Daria stepping up, looking for four in a row. She needs to have a huge day today. She's gonna sneak in and grab a check and possibly make a run in match play. Great shot there, the eight won't go. Can't throw it any better than that. She'll be making her first PWBA TV appearance. So this week we'll in an exciting fashion for her either way. Daria at minus 139 coming into today, 47th place. Gangora was the cash number at minus 61. She pulled 209 in the opening game. Working her way back toward plus. Wessner. 15th coming in to day two. Delivers three in a row now. Rodriguez with a tough task ahead of her today. Came in at minus 111, I believe, was the number. So knowing she would need to be 70 or 100 over. Got the front four here. That's a nice start. up on 37 again one of 21 players international here at this week's event the lone representative of Australia in the field this week of course the USA Malaysia England Mexico Colombia Canada Ukraine, Australia, Venezuela, Brazil, Poland, Indonesia, and Latvia. And representing the fine city of Chicago, Emil Williams Jr. That's right. How about that? I'm in the wrong place, though. Generally don't get along. Get 
Good folks from Green Bay. Also hailing from Chicago, DeAndre Beatty. She'll have a nice contingent here Sunday for her TV show. Couple hour drive. Since winning the 2012 USBC Queens, DeAndre's been relatively quiet doing the, the motherhood family thing. Working hard in the bowling industry, but really focusing on the competitive side this season and a lot of hard work paying off here. Definitely putting in the work and the time, of course, you mentioned last week how much work she has put in and some of the differences with believing and knowing that she can win for instead of saying you know whatever happens she's going to do her best no matter what but not really telling herself or believing that she can win difficult for her of course with her busy schedule helping youth players uh, excuse me, excel and succeed and hosting various youth events. Still puts in the time and still very competitive. Wants to be able to win and compete at this level uh, against these great players. Well, she made a very, uh, very big admission yesterday when we were chatting. And she said that she was trying to do too much. She wanted to do everything and she wanted to be everything, keep her eye on all the things. And she realized that it just wasn't working out. Her attention was too diverted, so at some point you have to let things go. You have to say no to some things to really give your, your full attention and focus to the priorities. and. You know, they say the first first step is admitting she did that and uh, and you just have to accept it you can only do so much so like a great weight has been lifted at that point able to focus on less things but give more attention to them so quality over quantity there Whoa. And Mr. Williams, we do have scores now. After 13 games, we have a new leader here. At the 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. Kelly Kulik out of the gates. Strong with 266. She leads at plus 296. Lindsay Boomershine, 237, gives her to plus 270. And then a distant third place now, Rocio Restrepo with the 290. She's at plus 159, followed by Shaidala Hamidi, plus 155. Shalin Kiefley, plus 135. CT Rockman, plus 121. Mandy Green, 107, Esther Chia, plus 101. Lee Sin, plus 90. And the left-hander, Shannon Pluhowski, rounded out the top 10 at plus 84 after a 193 start. Our defending champion, Claire Guerrero, is 11th at plus 81, so in good position. As Beatty, up to 15th place now at plus 51. Jody Wessner falls out of the top 15. She's 17th, hanging on to a spot there at plus 33. And the number right now, Josie Ernest Barnes at plus 17. 
So 18 players plus here. And that is your cut line. Next closest, Diana Z at minus one. She started with 162 to fall out of the top 18. She got a little bit of work to do with five games to go. Cash number drops as well. That's down to minus 65. Big names just outside that number. Aaron McCarthy, Shannon O'Keefe, Missy Park, and Brandy Breaker. We saw her shoot 268 to start. She's all the way up to 30, 36th place. And one more big game away from a $1,200 check, potentially. If you'd like to see the standings for yourself, top to bottom, you can visit pwb.com slash live. This is round three of qualifying. And Kelly Kulik leading at plus 296. And I think we're seeing a, a little bit different Kelly now. After some some things in life, priorities and just some off the lanes things that took away some of the focus for a minute, and of course potentially the frustration of making 10 TV shows in two seasons and not picking up a win here on the relaunched PWBA tour. But all of that's now behind her. So she was the winner at the 2017 PWBA Fountain Valley Open. And, uh, the cliche, of course, the monkey off the back and finally able to, in her 11th TV appearance or championship round appearance of the new tour, back on top. So she said, that helped, of course, and you know, she's a little more focused and feeling good mentally now. And, you know, just getting things in order. And uh, you know, once you get everything situated, you gotta feel better and confident. And she really enjoys bowling here at the uh, Schwaben on Bowling Alley. So all the pieces falling into place now uh, for Kelly on and off the lanes. And things moving in the right direction. And now she is moving in the right direction as well. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, everything she said, of course, completely agree with. And after she won, of course, mentioning the, the hump or the mountain to get over and everything emotionally that uh, her and the family went through. But, of course, you just have to yeah, imagine that to finally just kind of, you know, miss everything else that took place just to get the win finally to essentially be able to breathe a little bit easier. And for her, obviously, you know, she has accomplished so much in her career. Uh, but then to get, you know, to the uh, to the championship round so many times, of course, ten in, in two years, obviously says a lot about her talent, and that's not to be unexpected, obviously, from someone like Kelly Kulik, but to not win is what I think many people didn't expect, and she probably didn't expect it either. To finally get that done and out the way, and certainly a... Uh, uh, the weight lifted. Well, it's a, it's a tough balance. I mean, there's, there's now a lot of bowling to be done, a lot of weeks on the road, and we, we talked yesterday about some of the dedication these players and their workout regimens and they are they are athletes you know they all have their own things that they like to do and their own routines but when they're hard working athletes you know building their endurance and traveling and a lot of them also having families or full-time jobs other commitments and so it's a tough balance on the lanes off the lanes find the time to practice uh, just got off the phone with Stephanie Johnson now a mother of two, so doing the family thing, and you know, she said that you know, she she 
needs to escape every once in a while, you know, from from that part of things, and uh, goes out to practice to get ready to get in shape to be back on tour, and you know that's her time, and she's able to balance that and you know, maintain that time without distraction, knowing that this is this is work, this is part of the job, part of a job, a second job, however you look at it, you know, as a provider now. So you want to do well, provide for your family, but uh, being able to focus and separate things and you know, prioritize, like we mentioned with Deandra, and, and of course, you know, keeping things in tune and in check on and off the lanes, it's, it's not always easy. Sometimes things at home are not that good, or they're challenging. Sometimes things on the lanes aren't going as well. So, you know, it's as mentally and emotionally challenging and draining as it is physically being out there bowling 12 games a day. I'm not even sure what I would look like in bowling 12 games at this point in life. Well, I mean, you've got to feel it a little bit as well. I mean, you're watching 12 games a day. You're, you're talking about 12 games a day, sometimes to yourself, by yourself, you know, hitting the road, and um, the routine is, is what it is, and you know, Wednesday you're traveling, Thursday you're traveling, Friday, Saturday you're in the bowling center, Sunday you're back home, maybe Monday's laundry day, um, you know, for the, for the players, they're out trying to find time to practice and work out the kinks, and you know, you're out there working on the preview for the next week while you're you're at this event. So um, it's it's similar a little bit. And uh, so what are your uh, your thoughts on the whole situation? All right, Emil has no thoughts. It's, it's what he does. And what else we do? Just repeat the last part of that. Well, we're, we're talking about the... Uh, I, was, I was making sure this video was live. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just the challenges that we see as we, we wrap up game two here real quick. Uh, Gongora, 195. Paiute, 214, going in the right direction. As Beatty, opening the 10th, 178. Uh, McPherson, 205. Westner, 183. And we lost our final score for Rodriguez. Looked like... 231. 231. Uh, so back to the original question. I mean, we're, we're talking about the balance. The challenge of the tour uh, is set up so the players can come out and bowl Friday, Saturday, have time to travel Sunday, uh, potentially have a, a regular job, you know, Monday through Thursday, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a routine. It's a long 14 weeks. Uh, and every week, pretty much the same. Uh, and they're still trying to fit in time for simple things like doing the laundry or you know and for them it's, it's practicing and workouts and you know just home stuff for you it's getting getting ready for next week tv notes stories different things um, you know it's the tour life in the in the old days it was maybe 30 weeks a year now it's it's half that but it's uh, it's compact but it's intense it's no doubt about that uh laundry is important i will i will say I will say that. Making sure you do that is of utter importance. Or you can, you know, just go buy different things when you're out. But I generally don't do that in, re in that regard. But, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're not players in the sense, but go through some of the same things as players. And um, I think some things are similar. Then the differences, of course, are very different. Obviously, they're competing and bowling for livelihoods. Um, you know, trying to make a living, balancing, you know, their uh, career and or uh, or other career and their professional career on the lanes. Uh, we mentioned, you know, yesterday we've got nurses, teachers, accountants, um, et cetera, as well. And then we've just got full full time bowlers as well. Uh, so there's a lot to go involved in that. And then, you know, for us, it's you know, laundry, catching up with. Uh, in many cases, as simple as it sounds, but emails. You know, different things like that. The next project that's due, making sure we're ahead of the game and what we need, you know, two months from now at, at this particular location or stop. So a lot of similarities with, you know, the differences kind of get in the, the nitty gritty of, uh, you know, their bowling and, you know, we got to do the extra work 
to make sure when they get to that next stop, everything's good. Well, sir, you are uh, about to have a life-changing event as well. Uh, you'll have a you'll have a wife, and then of course you'll you'll be leaving your wife at home, leaving her behind to, to go out on the tour life. And so you know there's some challenges there. You get uh, a little homesick, they miss home, and it's a it's a, a tough compromise as well. You know, being being away. I mean, you're away right now, and. It's a little bit different, pre-marriage, but uh, you know, there's there's that aspect of it too. Sometimes not being able to, to leave and not wanting to leave, wanting to hurry home, you can always you know bring bring the whole family with you. So um, again, mentally challenging, emotionally draining, all of those things combined. All of them. So here we are, game three of six, final round of qualifying at the 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. They're joining this game on 35 and 36 by our tournament leader, Kelly Kulik. We'll have those updated standings here in just a moment. She is joined by Brittany Smith and Nicole DePaul Miller. And on 37 and 38, representing Venezuela, Karen Marcano. Kaylin Carl and Megan Kelly. If you have a favorite player here at this week's event, you can follow the live scoring. Go to pwv.com slash live. Follow your favorite player across the house. And his standings are there as well, separated round by round. Kulik, a very animated player, kind of always get a pretty good idea of what she might be thinking as she comes off the approach. Shot there by Megan Kelly getting the break. Foul spare in the second frame there. Tough spare, but picks it up. That's all you can do at that point. No, that's it. Threw a good shot too. The first one that was that was ten back. So. Great 
Rodney Smith out to uh, a quick three-back. We uh, at 79 over after two today. Start of the day with 266. Plus 77 after two. Started the event. Back to back games in the 180s before 279, 267. Appears to have figured out the fresh coming back after lunch. 236, 242. Then a little trouble with transition perhaps. Games four and five, 180, 171 before finishing with 249. And it's all it's all just learning. Taking notes and figuring out the, the different phases of the oil pattern, the transition. Making the right moves, and then of course, once you figure it out, it's time for match play, and then you cut the amount of traffic in half. Go from three or four on a pair to just two. So then it's all a guessing game once again. Sometimes in our sport, it's not about always making the best shots, but uh, making the best guesses and then taking advantage of good breaks and good runs. There are some hypotheses that are needed. Good quality, uh, excuse me, solid quality, educated guesses. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. name we haven't said too much over the two days meal Liz Johnson she's been a dominant the last two seasons uh, and this year she's making TV show after TV show but she quietly does her thing I think and then all of a sudden you look up and you're taking her picture for the TV show but uh, she is after 13 games 12th place just hanging in there talked yesterday just Grinding out games, 2-0, 2 teen, 2 -0. She's not bowling poorly, nothing under 190. But, uh, nothing over 240 either, so. Just plugging along, trying to get to match play, and then one step closer to another TV show. You know, for Liz, it's really, you know, if, if she's near match play cut as long as she gets in she's good yeah, it's a different you know, Liz at that point she could she could look like that throughout but once match play starts and she's involved and then it's, it's just a little different whether it's you know her a game or her C game uh, but she will tell you that she's used the C and D game quite often.
past the halfway point now of game number three. Goal to Paul Miller, Kelly Kulik, and Brittany Smith. Some updated standings for you after 14 games now. A little bit of leapfrogging going on. Lindsey Boomershine back on top now by a stick. At plus 308, shoots 238, goes around Kulik. Lindsey 308, Kulik 307. And then some separation. Sardal Hamidi of Malaysia is third at plus 177. Rocio Restrepo plus 166. Lee Jane Sin is fifth at plus 136. CT Rockman plus 130. Shalin Zilkeefly plus 127. So three players, four players from Malaysia in the top seven. Brittany Smith here in our featured pair is eighth at plus 126. Liz Johnson 
shooting 238, moving up to ninth place at plus 99. Esther Chia of Malaysia is 10th at plus 95. Cut number, Leanne Holsenberg making a move, shooting 233. She's at plus 16. She is tied for that 18th spot with Jody Wessner. Jody with back-to-back -back 180 games. Not dropping too, too far. We've got 19 players, 20 players plus Danielle McEwen is 20th at plus one. Cash number, Sandra Gongora, minus 57. So that number jumping up a little bit. A handful of bowlers within 10 or 20 pins of that number. This is the final round of qualifying for this block. 18 game pinfall totals will determine the 18 players who advance to round robin match play that kicks off tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll have it all for you live here on Extra Frame. Get a brief recap for you after this round. And Do a Facebook post, let you know who those 18 players are. They'll go get some rest. And be back this evening. How much rest can we get? We don't need are rest. Are we included in that? We don't, no, we're not. Oh, okay. we're, not. We're, just, we're just watching bowling. Okay. We're talking about No, we don't need I any just rest. just checking. Yeah, I, I don't think we count. I don't know. I wouldn't say uh, this is grueling work by any means for us. No, I'm not saying that. However, the fine staff here at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley taking great care of the players and the staff. One of the, the top features of this great venue, the, uh, the unlimited diet do. <laughs> to help the days pass just a little bit easier. Sometimes it's the little things that make all the difference. That was so unexpected. But I should have known something like that <laughs> from you. Just saying, some of the, some of the <laughs> venues uh, really go above and beyond for the players. Good shot. To make them feel welcome and comfortable, hospitality keep them energized and nourished and if we happen to sneak in and stick a cup into the soda fountain well we do need energy as well so this is true much appreciated oh they're great man Orvis Dave Labar Pope proprietors here definitely uh Great feedback from the players. I think anyone that I've talked to, either coming into this event or during the tournament, uh, they mentioned just the way they uh, they enjoy Green Bay, the city, the venue. Uh, you know, for some it's Bears. I believe Lindsey Boomerstein, professor of love for the Packers earlier today, prior to the start of practice. But um, you know, whether it's the city itself, whether it's uh, your like or dislike for the the local football team, but uh, just a very welcoming place. And, you know, for Kelly, she mentioned that her ball just rolls very well here. So, um, of course, 
you want to come back to places like that, but I think outside of that, uh, the great media coverage, even today before we got here, the local newspaper coming out and doing a Facebook Live broadcast from the uh, Schwabenon Bowling Alley talking about the PWBA and the bowlers and a lot of great events have been held here. You know, with all that is or could be going on, I think the timing's right, of course, not being football season, but and I can't speak for other weeks of the PWBA tour, but uh, at least following along from home, the amount of media coverage we saw, uh, pretty great coming out on practice day, TV stations, newspapers, radio, live radio here in the venue. Got to talk to some of the players. Uh, perhaps we'll see some more on Sunday for the TV shows. Of course, the live telecast for this event, Players' Championship, that'll be noon Eastern on CBS Sports Network. And Brittany Smith trying to put in her bid for a spot on that TV show. Making moves here in game three. Already 79 over for the day. Working her way up the standings. And games so far this morning, 213, 266. And she's gonna be in the 260s once again, at least 277 max. That'll be a nice, Surge for her into the top five. Again, all pinfall carries over. Bonus pins available during match play as well. 30 pins for a win, 15 for a tie. So you're looking at 540 bonus pins out there. If you can go 18 and 0. Struggles here in our featured pair, 193. Nicole DePaul Miller, 147. Brittany Smith will be in the 270s. And our other pair just now getting ready for the 10th frame. That's unusual, but great start for Brittany Smith today. Plus 152 on the day. That is a huge effort here in our third round of qualifying. Plus 199. So should be inside the top five. Three games to go here. Kelly 172, Marcano 192, and Carl can get to 154 with three in the 10th here. We will have game number four coming up in just one moment. We're at the halfway point of today's final round of qualifying. This is Matt Cannizzaro and Emil Williams Jr. at the 2017 Go Bowling. PWBA Players Championship here at the uh, Schwabenon Bowling Alley in Green Bay, game four. Coming up next, thanks for tuning in folks. We'll be right back.
believe this is the first time we have seen this group on our featured pair, any of our featured pairs. Speaking of Davyalova, Jasmine, and Zerbinski. Tina's had a pretty few good weeks, especially in Lincoln, nearly making to the last final. Had a very good week, lost in a group step ladder. Diana has already made two shows, won the USBC Queens in 2017. Good shot there. The two good ones to start for Christina. Around the time last year where Summer Jasmine kind of really took charge kind of in the second half, uh, bowling well, a couple match plays. So Esther last night on 35 and 36 deal with some tough pin carry and then get it together with four in a row. And he left the seven pin in the 10th frame and getting it to 20. Zerbinski for three in a row. Hits, trips to six. over on the day. Let's we'll see what that puts her momentarily overall. Good along with back in Azaro, Emil Williams Jr. Janiel Milligan, Kathy Watka, Kathy Kavicki. Minus 54 on the day. Looks like may have stuck a little bit at the approach, but she'll take a break. Looks a tad frustrated. Nice spare just to our left. 4 7 10 made by Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia. And Linda Barnes with the 1 2 4 10. She's on the pair with again Esther Chia and Christine Johnston. Pair to their right Amanda Green, Katie Ann Sob Schroeder, and Miranda Panis. Zabinski looking for four in a row, and she gets it.
Honda takes care of it. USBC Hall of Famer. Right, Zavialova. of a week 10. The Latvia native, one of the best players here on tour. Zerbinski for five in a row. She leaves a seven pin. Our All-American at Maryland Eastern Shore. A couple of national titles, actually several. NCAA and Intercollegiate Team Championships title. Part of the group that won them both in the same season. Well, it looks like we got past game three. All of a sudden, you look down, you don't see as many lanes on going. Now, this time yesterday, there are a few pairs with four players. So a couple finishing up, of course, game three at this moment. Nine pin thought about standing. That was a really good shot there from Diana. games. So Yalova was even. 16 pins out of the top 18. Summer Jasmine, and she wraps a 10. Decent shot, the front four, four pin. For Esther Chia that she takes care of. Open frame in the six for Christina Zerbinski. Very nice crowd here at the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. For, almost forgot what day it was, but I'm pretty sure it is Friday. You get started a day early this week with competition. Of course, a normal standard event. Today would begin qualifying. And now we are nearly complete. Our three rounds of qualifying. There was no cut for today. All players returned this morning to bowl round three. All 
All right, Zavialova looking for a double. Good shot. To our left, Natasha Roslin, Katie Zwiebelhofer, and Shai Dottel Hamidi. Shai Dottel clean through five. The spare she made in the second nine spare, now the first double of her game as Zerbinski gets back on it in the seventh. Linda Barnes. Shot in the sixth. Kelly Kulik and on 42. She's got the front four. In trouble for Summer Jasmine. Don't forget, folks, if you are in the area, I certainly encourage you to come on by. The Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley. Only for great action here at the Players' Championship. Want to buy Go Bowling. TV Finals, of course, will be live at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern on CBS Sports Network on Sunday, June 25th, again this Sunday. We'll be taping three additional TV finals, Wichita Open, the Pepsi Lincoln Open, and the Greater Detroit Open. Also, if you're in the area, love for you to stop by tomorrow, 11 a.m. Core experience. Tailgate, some good opportunities, some potential for logoed merchandise. Someone will win a year-long subscription to the core as well. More food, a beverage, and uh, some good chat about bowling. So come on out, learn more about the core. Zerbinski, best shot of the game there. Esther did not like it. But uh, she's still in the running here for 279. Brittany Smith just shot 273 on 35 and 36. So Rocio Restrepo shoot 290 out the gates this morning. On the same pair was Brandy Branca. She shot 268. See some higher scores here. Seven pin here for Zerbinski in the ninth. Fourth game moving right along on both of our featured pair. Give it a run there, Linda. Open frame in the eighth. Everyone is now into game number four across the house. 
So we should have a score update pretty soon. Sure to check live scoring. Got to check out what else is going on throughout the building. Get many nearing the completion of game number four. Uh, Zabi Alaba will enter the 10th frame here with this shot. And a high flush nine pin. Mitty. She's got four in a row. Again, to our left, you see her ball going down the lane. Next to Diana, making five in a row for Shy Donald. All right, nine spare. The Oliva can get to 199. Looking to her equipment. They'll try something. Different here on the field. Well, Zerbinski got a chance to get to the 230s. Going to need a double to be in that position. That one's got to get up. It was minus 167 her overall total after 14 games. Plus 30 on the day overall after three. One ninety nine for Zavialova, Esther Chia. She is in the two fifties. With good count here, obviously. Decent count. That two fifty eight sounds lovely. She led after round number one after the first six games. All right, 258 for Chia, 210 for Zerbinski. Summer Jasmine already with one in the 10th. Trying to get to 195. All right, nice double. A couple good shots. He's throwing a couple good shots here in this game. Just wrapped a few 10 pins early. One eighty six for Linda Barnes.
193 for Summer Jasmine. Christine Johnston will finish things out here on our featured pairs. Shai Donald Hamidi, meanwhile, six in a row. And that run will end there, first shot in the 10th. Just to our left, spare strike will give her 245. Keep you updated on that. Johnston, nine spare, and her field shot coming up. All right, good shot to end things for Johnston. She shoots 186. Hamidi with the spare. And again, game four complete. Game five on the way. Coming up on 35 and 36. We will be joined by Ashley Rucker. Dario, Dasha Kovalova, and Carolyn Doran Ballard, 37 and 38, Gabby Mayfield, Samantha Shaden, and Danielle McEwen will join us during game number five. And Hamini shoots 241. Continues to add to her total. Some very good bowling going on this morning. Some very good scores. We'll update you on the other side of this break. How about a little PWBA vault time, huh? Sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy some of our historic moments on the PWBA tour. You're watching the 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. It's Bowl TV on Extra Frame. Again, this woman right here can possibly win tonight for the first time in five years. Oh. Think we'd see some oh. tears there? <laughs> I, I think so. Boy, and, and it's amazing. After 19 years on tour and 18 national titles, 64th career television appearance, look at that, 54 wins, 50 losses. Oh, what a shot that was. Beautiful. She looks determined. Look at the scoreboard here. In the ninth frame, Mary Andrubo still with a five pin lead. But she cannot shut out Nikki Giannulli. As best she can shoot is 244. Nikki, because she's working on a double, can still shoot 249. Oh, packed nine pin. And having a stone nine pin show up right in the 10th frame, not what you would hope to see. No. With the spare here, she will force Nikki to strike on her first ball in the 10th. Well, this is the shot of five years of hard work, game changing, and about everything a person can do to remain competitive. Needs a strike and four pins. Normally takes a little extra time anyway. Absolutely. Oh, my. Wow. I mean, what does Mary Ann Drupo say after that? She leaves the ninth, and she, you know, you just have to go. It was not meant to be. There's nothing you can do. Absolutely. Mm. Wow. Well, Nikki Giannullius is the winner. We will be back to get a few words from the champion.
number five here, finally underway at the Oshawabanon Bowling Alley. Here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Game five of six, final round of qualifying at the 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. We are almost at that time when we cut the field down here from 67 players to the top 18 for round robin match play. This game, we are joined by Carolyn Dorn Ballard, the Hall of Famer. Daria Kovalova from the Ukraine. And former Junior Team USA member and collegiate standout Ashley Rucker, the left-hander here on 35 and 36th. And to our right, We're joined by Danielle McEwen, Team USA standout. Gabby Mayfield, new bowling center owner. And Samantha Shaden checking in from Baltimore. Uh, updated standings for you in just a moment. Again, game five of six. And game 17 of 18 overall. So a long couple of days here for these players. 12 games yesterday over two blocks, which is their usual PWBA regimen. But adding a third round of qualifying here for everybody. Since this is a major, second major of the year. First one, of course, being the USBC Queens. Typically players will bowl 12 games, cut to the cashers round for six more games. But this week, everybody bowling the 18 games of qualifying before we cut down the field for match play. This is Matt Cannizzaro alongside Emil Williams Jr. So we are bringing it home here in qualifying. Updated standings available at pwb.com slash live. Live scoring link there as well, so you can follow your favorite players across the house here. And then coming up tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, the first round of match play. Head-to-head -head round robin, 30 bonus pins on the line, 18 games between today and tomorrow before we cut things down again to the top four for the live step ladder finals. That'll be on CBS Sports Network Sunday at noon Eastern. Remember to clear your schedule, set an alarm, don't forget. We'll crown our second major champion of the year. Defending champ here this week, hanging around the top 10, Clara Guerrero. Right now she's wearing the jersey she wore when she won last year. I know that because there's a giant poster, <laughs> a banner with her likeness hanging over the lanes here. Uh, with her holding the trophy, her very first PWBA title. And it was a major, so what a breakthrough for her. After all, she's accomplished in her career and now celebrating today, wearing that same jersey, colors of the Colombian flag. Of course, Clara, part of a very strong Colombian contingent here on the PWBA tour. Break there for CDB. Get the nine out. Avoiding the split. Again, we'll have updated standings very shortly, if not already. Let's take a look. PWBA.com slash live. Matthew is correct. We do have some updated standings after 16 games. After 16 games, everyone in there with five. We do have them. I don't want to steal your thunder, guy. We thunder buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, anyway, here we go. After 16 games, as we get dangerously close to whittling down the field here from 67 to 18, on top of the standings, pulling very well today. Uh, and yesterday, she was your leader after 12 games as well. Lindsey Boomershine at plus 343, averaging 221.4 through 16 games. Again, plus 343, and 20 pins back. Kelly Kulik, plus 323. And then we have Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia at plus 262. Brittany Smith, saw her on our featured pair last game, or two games ago now, pulling 273. She had 190 and is at plus 189 in fourth place. And then the Malaysian contingent, Lee Jane Sin, plus 163. Esther Chia, plus 155, tied with C.T. Rockman at plus 155. Liz Johnson, hanging around the top 10. Shot 245 last game. She is at plus 149 now. So making her way up the standings. Rocio Restrepo, had a nice video of her earlier this morning shooting 290. She's in ninth place at plus 143. And Sabrina Divis making things happen here. The school teacher. School's in session. She is at plus 110. Breaking into the top 10, tied with Shalinzo Kifli of Malaysia. Divis, 215, 219, 237, 202 to break into the top 10 today. Amanda Green. Just on the outside in 12th place, plus 86. Liz Culkin, plus 48. Defending champion Clara Guerrero, plus 43. Andras Beatty, hanging in there at plus 34. The left-hander, Shannon Pluchowski, like the only left-hander in the top 18. She is 16th at plus 25. Hall of Famer Leanne Holsenberg, plus 22. And your cut right now, Sandra Gongora of Mexico. Last two games, 224, 242 to get the plus nine. She is the cut with two games to go. 18 players plus means averaging 200 or better. Uh, 19th, look it in, Alicia Current at minus 10. Also close, Josie Ernest Barnes, Missy Parkin, Diana Z, Danielle McEwen. So anybody's ball game here to get into the top 18. Uh, it really is pretty close all the way down to even 30th place, a big game. Could, uh, could make some things happen there. Brianna Cote, definitely capable. Uh, Shannon O'Keefe, Aaron McCarthy, all just inside the cash line. Uh, potentially could get to the top 18 with a, a couple big games here to finish things out. So cut number right now is at plus nine. And the cash number is minus 88. 194.5 average, Aaron McCarthy trying to hold on and hold off uh, a handful of bowlers trying to get in and get some, some moolah, 1200 bucks for 19th through 32nd place. Uh, CDB, Karen Dorn Ballard is one of those players. She's at minus 106, so within striking distance. And another player, Emil, we talked to you last night. Maria Jose Rodriguez, not feeling too good after 12 games, but uh, she has now moved up. Uh, she is plus 71 today, last three games, 231, 227, 237. Uh, so she is now in 25th place inside that cash number. Uh, so definitely a lot of motivation, uh, 1,200 motivations to <laughs> really get things going today. And uh, she is on the up here um, and really, at this point now, uh, you know, with the look that she must have, you never know, top 18 possibility. Yeah, absolutely, striking distance for sure. Uh, certainly not happy with her performance uh, yesterday and really last evening. And uh, you know, needless to say, she shot 1077, so not happy about last night and came in this morning. Didn't start too well, 176, but since then, 231, 227, 237, as you mentioned. And you never know. We've, we've seen it before. Uh, one big game, couple big games. Never know what's going on in front of you. 
uh, in the standings. All you can do is control what you control, and sometimes it does work out. So we'll see where she ends up. Of course, as you mentioned, and uh, talked a little bit about it yesterday during round one, just uh, her season has been relatively consistent. Tied for the lead, uh, the tour lead and match play appearances with five. So just to kind of give you an idea, has already made a show this season as well. Be sure to check live scoring, folks. And of course, obviously use the standings and the pairing sheets as well to know where players will end up. For game number six as Kovalova gave the 4-9 a ride. So open in the fifth for, for Wichita State. First team All-American, player of the year. In our conversation earlier, man, talking about Liz Johnson, and I'll tell you all she has to do is just be a match play. <laughs> well, I was just looking at the live scoring, and uh, she's trying to do more than that. She is really getting things going. She's got the front six down on 17 and 18. So quietly making her move. I think she's a lock at this point for the top 18. Uh, especially if she keeps striking here. We'll keep an eye on that for sure. But um, certainly has made her presence felt uh, since the tour returned in 2015. And uh, doing it again here this week. That's what she does. So quiet. Just does what Liz does. All the verbiage you could say. Doing Liz things. But if, if she's ever out of a, of a match play cut early in, a, in an event or, you know, when there's a couple rounds, just don't fret. Don't even worry about it because five games later, She'll probably be where she needs to be. That was a big frame for Danielle McEwen. She was trying to get to 250. She is 23rd, minus 20. Very un Danielle like season, I would say, for her to this point. Still solid, of course, overall, 11th on the points list. For those, of course, used to seeing Danielle, for example, last year leading the tour in match play appearances, for example, 12 out of 13. She's made three so far, but no TV shows as of yet. So I think it's, we well, don't see players on TV that, of course, that we have that, that element back on the tour. Fans can sometimes think that certain players aren't bowling well. It's just that they just haven't uh, gotten to a, a particular TV event. Doesn't mean that their season overall is not consistent. For example, the two best examples of that would be obviously Diana's season from a year ago, as well as Amanda Green, who both made the season ending tour championship um, on competition points and neither made a TV show. Well, you got to put yourself in position, knock on the door, as they say, the cliches, uh, and good things will happen. And sometimes it just takes that one breakthrough. Uh, Diane had hers recently. You know, made, the, made that first show, and then, of course, winning the Queens. Sometimes it's just uh, it's a floodgate at that point. When you're not distracted by the, the what ifs and the frustrations and you're able to just relax and take some of the pressure off. Certainly our, our international players are doing something right. The Malaysians in here for this, uh, this group of events and bowling very well.
Double in the 10th for Danielle. She's going to go to the bag. Jaden can get to 180. for McEwen. Liz opened in the seventh. Stop the string, but back on it in the eighth. Game six for us. And for you, really, we'll feature Aaron McCarthy, Missy Klug, and Leanne Holsenberg, along with C.T. Rockman, Brandy Branca, and Rocio Restrepo. Let's see if either of those players will be eating big games comfortably inside the cut. Mayfield shoots 190. Shaden shoots 180. Looks like Maria Jose Rodriguez bowling well. Down on the far side, 15 and 16. So we get to the 240s this game, so it's on our way to being plus potentially. Making a huge run here in this final round. Brianna Cote trying to do the same thing. She can get to 248. Angie Ramirez can shoot 240. Now ready for the 10th frame here on our featured pair, CDB. 
Carolyn Doran Ballard's gonna step up first. Kovalova. Back to back splits. Gonna step up on the other lane. struggles here in game five 154 CDB can get to 188 and Rucker can finish things off with 213 and Emil Williams jr. back in action but needing some energy having a free lunch snack here metabolism of a GoBowling.com race car. Hey, it used to be that quick. Get a little older and, you know. You're up there. It's true. I'm just killing time right now doing this live stream thing till uh, till the senior tour come out of retirement. There from Rucker, she'll finish it out. So, no 
little fireworks here on our featured pairs in game number five. Final game coming up, so it's pressure time. The squeeze factor. Trying to get in, trying not to fall out. Game 18. Players headed our way. We'll have the finale coming up in just one minute. Final game of qualifying 2017 Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. We have Schwaben on Bowling Alley in Green Bay, Matt Canizaro and Emil Williams Jr. Game 18 coming up in just a minute. We'll be right back. See if we can't get this guy some dessert while we're waiting as well. Spare. She knew how important that was. Now she wants to get as many pins as she can because not only will Karen, if she strikes, she'll shoot 207. And not only will Carol Norman need the first two shots in the 10th, but she would need at least eight pins to win the tournament. So still, Lori Nichols needs a strike here. Oh, bad shot. And that virtually gives Carol just a little more breathing room. Carol Norman, these could be the two biggest shots of her career. She needs a double right here to win her first title. Big shot, she needs this one right here. You gotta get the first one before you can get the second. Looks good. There's the first. She knew that one was there. Uh, look at her. Man, Lori Nichols doesn't even want to look at it. Oh, yeah, Lori will watch at this point. There's nothing she can do. Yeah. What you say? Yeah. yeah, she got it, that seven pin. And she almost left the solid seven on not just one, but both of those shots. Carol Norman now has to stay behind the foul line and get six pins to win this tournament. But what great shots in Watch a her. key position. She didn't even see it. She, she never was saw turned the, around facing this way. She never saw the seven pin go down. She was doing a 40 yard sprint. She knew how well she'd thrown it. And if she hadn't carried that one, it wasn't going to be because she didn't put it in the pocket. Needing six pins, excuse me, five pins right here. And it's over. She that got was funny. it. Finishes with style, striking out in the 10th frame and the first ever tournament victory for Carol Norman here in the Greater Little Rock Classic. Either. I don't really like ice cream. And I hate chocolate. It's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite color is McKendry purple. Starts the championship match. Six. Yes! Perfect ball reaction, all 10 down. Softball was a huge part of my life growing up. I grew up with five brothers and we all played you know, baseball and I played softball. Uh, bowling wasn't even on the radar until I was 16 when my little brother started bowling. So softball is, was my first love, my passion. A league of their own. There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. I have multiple that anytime it's on, I, I watch it and they're always like little girly chick flicks. Um, but one that's always a must stop and watch is Forrest Gump, which is not a girly chick flick, but that movie is great. Juliana Ho. What? She's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Shano Mack. 
Shane McMahon, uh, when he was really big and it like 10 years ago, people would call him Shane O'Mac. And so I walked in one day for a whole group of people together for a wrestling pay-per-view and one of Brian's friends was like, oh, it's Shane O'Mac. Loved um, Jim Abbott. I, I, I really, really liked the Angels growing up and I just thought that he was, what he was able to do was incredible. Any day that I get to spend with my kids at McKinsey. All right, game six underway. <clears throat> Excuse me, big thanks to uh, the uh, kitchen staff here at the Eschwabanon Bowling Alley. Fantastic grilled cheese with turkey. That hit the spot, that was much needed. I'm ready to go. And I'm still gonna eat lunch. All right, here is C.T. Rockman on her Back of her jersey, if you can see it, maybe not, but it'll say, or it does say, C.T. Sophia. Or Sophia, excuse me. C.T. Sophia, part of her actual first name. C.T., Rocio, and Brandy Branca. Of course, you saw these two get off on a very good start in game number one this morning. Rocio shot 290. Brandy shot 268. We're on 39 and 40. Restrepo looking for an early three-bagger and a 1-2-4-10.
Rocio plus 35 on the day. Branca, meanwhile, plus 128 on the day. So Brandy is cooking. After 17 games, Your update looks like this with one game to go. Lindsey Boomershine at plus 351. Kelly Kulik at plus 318. Shai Donald Hamidi at third at plus 241. Liz Johnson fourth at plus 194. Brittany Smith in fifth at plus 183. Tied for sixth, Esther Chia, C.T. Rockman plus 161. Lee Jane Sin in eighth at plus 138. Shalin Keithley in ninth at plus 115. Rocio Restrepo is 10th at plus 104. Sabrina Davis is in 11th at plus 90. 12th is Amanda Green at plus 67. Amanda struggled out the gates this morning, 150, 169, after being in third coming into the day. Shannon Pluhowski is 13th at plus 36. Clara Guerrero, 14th at plus 32. Sandra Gungora is 15th at plus 30. Big game for her. Shot 221. In fact, she has gone 224, 242, 221. 16th is Liz Colkin at plus 29. Deandra Asbady still hanging around the number at plus 27. Leanne Holsenberg is the cut right now at plus 23. Danielle McEwen at plus 3. Mentioned the... Uh, had she shot 250, that would have certainly catapulted her inside the number in that previous game. Maria Jose Rodriguez shot 234 again. She has gone 231, 227, 237, 234. Rodriguez again minus six in 20th. Still with a chance here. Josie Ernest Barnes in 21st at minus 11. Brandy Branca, who we are watching on 37 and 38, is in 22nd. She is minus 14 with an opportunity. Mentioned plus 128 on the day to get to this point. Brittany Smith is going plus 136. Boomershine plus 118 today. Hamidi plus 109. Branca, 268, 226, 214, 192, 228. She's going to need a big one here. Cash line is 32nd at minus 77 right now. Boomershine continues to go well. You're talking about lined up. Lindsay is certainly that. All right, folks, be sure to be paying attention to live scoring if you need some help. PWBA.com slash live. Again, Branca is with us here. Maria Jose, or excuse me, Josie Ernest Barnes. 
is on 43 and 44. Maria Jose Rodriguez. Well, I could tell you in a second, but. Hmm. All right, that means she must be on 25 and 26. That is correct. Olsenberg, again, the cut number. She is plus 23. So we've got uh, a good variety in front of us here at the tournament leader. A couple players inside the number right now. The match play cut number itself. And then a player or two right now on the outside looking in. Here's Brandy Branca, one of those players on the outside. Has bowled so well today. For Brandy, she probably thought about it as a cashers round type opportunity. It's kind of set up that way in a sense, but it's uh, everyone came back to bowl qualifying today, so not technically a cashers round. Although if you do not make match play, 19 through 32nd will receive a prize check. But the reason I say that is, is we see a good spare, 210 made by Boomershine a couple times this year and specifically at the Cuba AMF Sonoma County Open in which she went on to finish second. Uh, Branca just demolished the cashers round. Which enabled her to, of course, move up the standings and ultimately a good position in uh, match play and then on to the number two seed. Should be a big uh, a big match play opportunity here for Sandra Gungora. She has bowled well today, clearly figuring some things out. So talented an opportunity. I think if she can get in, she can make some noise. She just missed match play last week in Detroit. She shot uh, 150 or so in the last game to fall out of the top 12. Culkin again plus 29 123 in the seventh working on the spare she's got a three pin to deal with she is 16th and plus 29 Aaron McCarthy nearly left in pocket 7-10. Aaron McCarthy right now was just outside the cash number. Restrepo, that's got to hurry. That one kind of floated. It looks similar to her shot in frame number three on the same left lane.
Appreciate everyone tuning in. I know Matt's been uh, keeping track of some comments and things on Facebook. So if I miss you like I normally would, would chat with you. Wow. How do you not make that? How does the two pin not hit the 10 there? Did you guys see that? I mean, seriously. How does that not? Wow. Roland's so brutal sometimes. All right, Leanne in very good position to hold her spot in the cashers round at the moment. Liz Culkin can shoot 203. And that would be three very important pins for her. If she can get to that number. Six, seven, ten for Colkin. And Restrepo back on it with a strike. Andrea Asbady, 17th. Cian Gungora, both on 23 and 24 to finish the day. Hopefully, we didn't jinx Sandra. at the live scoring here. She's got 150 in the ninth. May the spare, so she can only get to 170. She would fall to even. Boy, and at this point, even probably won't do it. She might be 19th, 20th, or 21st, somewhere in that area. Olsenberg will move up the standings the way it is looking currently. This shot there from Rockman. CT in no danger at all. She is comfortably in sixth, tied with her Malaysian teammate Esther Chia. So Gongora shoots 167. She will go down to minus three. Even bigger spare now for Liz Culkin if she can make this. Brandy Branca now with trouble. It comes in the ninth frame. Four, six, seven. And Culkin gets three. She shoots 171. And she will be even. As Beatty shoots 218. She'll be at plus 45, which will be good enough to get in. McEwen is on 47 and 48. Let's see, Rodriguez can get to 227. That's Maria Jose we're speaking of. See where Jody Wessner is. She was near the top of the standings for most of 
ground number one at minus 30 and 24th. She can get to 238. I would put her at plus eight. Yeah, I tell you, you never know the way it's going. Got the first one in the 10th. Shot there from Missy Kluge. Restrepo open in the ninth. Not going to hurt her too much. Brandy Branca. Best she can get to is 192 here. That would put her at minus 22. shot Westner did double get into the 230s Did shoot 238, so she had the back five for 238. Did Jody Wessner. So she'll finish at plus eight. Olsenberg, first one in the tenth. Ain't nothing doing. Ten pin. Randy, the eight pin. Takes some time, exhales. Quality shot there for McCarthy. And that shot may have may be the difference between a, a check this week. So Branca will finish at minus 33. Nice game by Leanne Holsenberg, 237. He'll get to plus 60. And that is more than enough for match play at this point. Miss Danielle McEwen score. And we missed Alicia Curran as well. Strepo finishes with 185.
pretty sure Deandra, she did. She shot 218, so she's plus 45. CT Rockman. Oh, well, at most, if she gets some count, we'll be at 188. Well, I look to my left, I look to my right. Actually, I needed a leash current score, and she's still bowling. I didn't even realize she was that close to us. 188 for CT. Alicia Current finishes with 172. And that will not do it. Hopefully that is enough to remain. She was at minus 23. Shalin Zul Keefley, final player. See to the right of your screen. There's some players and some folks standing right underneath the camera. So if I turn it toward that direction, you may get a glimpse of uh, the top of their head. So Shaolin will have the honor of closing out qualifying. Asher's round, or excuse me, the cut to receive a check. Again, coming into this game was minus 77. So Keefley shoots 194, and that will do it for qualifying as you hear the voice of Tennille Milligan. All right, so hang tight, folks. We're gonna keep but uh, keep everything live here until we have the official announcement of match play. Again, so hang tight. We'll have that for you, hopefully, not too long. And uh, we'll do that, and uh, we'll know who our top 18 is. So hold on a bit. And uh, while we're at it, throw a little, just a little uh, footage up for you, just a little bit, two minutes worth or so. And uh, that'll do it. All right, so hang tight. Back in a moment, top 12. Bowl TV on extra frame. First bowling ball ever underneath my Christmas tree, probably at the age of seven, was the Kmart Blue Light Special. It was the blue and white swirl with my name on it. I love blue. It, it uh, matches my eye color. Blue is the color of the ocean. Blue is, uh, I don't know, to me it's just a happy-go-lucky color. My last meal would be a sausage pie from Spiritos. That would be my, my ultimate, you know, before going to the chamber. That's it, I'm going out with pizza. Ooh, all-time favorite movie? I gotta say Jaws. I, I mean, you know, come on. And you know, every time I go in the ocean, I still glance left to right to see if I see a dorsal fin pop out of the water or something. But yeah, it's just one of the scariest movies of all times, great lines from it, and uh, can never be recreated. Uh, I try to think the last CD I bought is probably one of the Reba McIntyre CDs. Her greatest hits. She's not one of her greatest hits, but she's came out with a love album. She's one of my favorites. I can tell you offhand, there's been a lot of uh, Lady Antebellum going on. 
Coffee, cream only. Yep. I'm a Dunkin' Donuts girl though. You can proudly say that, air that, if you want me to be the spokesperson, because I run on Dunkin' Donuts and I bowl on Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'm a very funny person. I know that's hard to believe. Uh, I'm like, you know, I, I'm very guarded at first when I'm introduced to somebody new for the first time, but once I get to know them, I, I, I'm an open book. One day, any job? Hollywood actors. I would love not, not to be have my own trailer or the limelight or anything, but just to be able to be behind the camera to make jokes or to be serious or dramatic and to see what that's like, the, the actual technique that goes into it. I would love to be on Dancing with the Stars. I just want to see one of them lift me up over their head. That's why I want to be on Dancing with the Stars. And to trade in my Dexters for heels, that's a little sketchy for me. You know, I have to really be on my toes, a lot of core strength. But I, I would, I would love to be on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, the easy one is ice cream, but I'm a sucker for homemade chocolate chip cookies. That's my, if you want to, you know, catch me on my weakness and a downfall, just wave a, call, a cookie in front of me and I'm at your beck and call. ESPN Magazine's got to be one of them, just because I wouldn't take my clothes off for anybody. So they're in the top. Um, obviously the, the comic book, being in a Spider-Man, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man comic book, that just came out of the whim because I treated somebody with respect and paid close attention to his daughter. Peter David's a wonderful human being. That would be second. Third, um, honestly, all the people I've met over the years and can call a friend. You know, being able to travel and I've stayed in so many people's homes, not as a stranger, but as a welcome guest. And uh, that's gotta be it, just being able to mix with all these wonderful people all over.
Taking our score sheet to the tournament office, Kayla Pashina.
Players Championship. Your tournament leader at plus 367 is Lindsay Boomershine. Qualifying second is Kelly Kulik at plus 341. And third is Brittany Smith at plus 257. And fourth is Shaidano Hamidi at plus 241. Qualifying fifth is Liz Johnson at plus 168. And sixth, Lee. Jane Sin at plus 160, and 7th is T. Rockman at plus 149. At plus 145, in 8th place is Sabrina Davis, and ninth is Esther Chi at plus 144. Qualifying 10th, Shaolin Zukifli at plus 109, and 11th is Amanda Green at plus 108. Qualifying 12th, Rocio Vestrepo at plus 89. In 13th is Leanne Holsenberg at plus 60. 14th, Deandra Asbady at plus 45. Qualifying 15th is Danielle McCune at plus 19. Qualifying in 16th place, Jody Westner plus 8. 17th is Maria Jose Rodriguez at plus 5. And qualifying in the 18th and final spot to match play at plus 4. Shannon Plahowski. Shannon Plahowski is our final qualifier. Our load of cash will be 32nd place is Linda Barnes at minus 90. Linda Barnes is our final cash spot at minus 90. All right, folks, there you have it, plus four, plus four. Shannon Plahowski is 18th. Linda Barnes grabs the last capture spot in 32nd at minus 90. Had some movement there. Shout out to Maria Jose Rodriguez for out just flat out getting it done uh, in round number three today to get into match play, as well as Jody Wessner. Told you that uh, she needed them all, and she certainly did. She got it done as well. All right, so here we go for match play. We will start at 5 p.m. Central. 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern for match play. Round number one will begin. We'll finish match play tomorrow. But first things first, the top 18 will bowl round robin, and it starts tonight. So for Matt Canazaro, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. We'll see you in a few hours. Talk to you soon. It's the 2017GoBowling.com PWBA Players Championship Live on Extra Frame. <laughs>